Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Boy, I like this group. On behalf of the pastors and our board of trustees, we want to welcome you to the Andrew Jackson Davis Educational Building for our Sunday service. Now, at this time, if you're fully vaccinated, you do not have to wear a mask. Um, and But I want to remind you that we do not uh, allow personal recordings or vid uh, videos uh, during this service. Uh, so at, also, please turn off your cell phones. And I'm so glad we don't have to say pagers anymore. <laughs> we used to have to say pagers. OK, to begin our service, Mandy will light three candles symbolizing the unity of body, mind, and spirit. Thank you, Mandy. There you go. This is always the most challenging part of the service. <laughs> These clickers have a mind of their own. Thank you so very much. At this time, I'd like you to rise, please, if you're able, for our invocation. Infant in spirit, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to gather together and to share the wisdom of the universe with each other. We ask you to open our hearts. We ask you to guide our lecturer. And it's in the name of truth I we pray. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. Thank you. <coughs> OK, to start off uh, in the, your bu bulletin, in the back of the bulletin, you will see our Declaration of Principles. If you join with me to read these, and uh, any of you that's been at these services before that we need you to say these in a way that you believe them just not recite them you need to say them with determination we believe in infinite intelligence we believe that the phenomenon of fissure both physical and spiritual are expressions of infinite intelligence we affirm that the correct understanding of such expression and living in accordance therewith constitute true religion. We affirm that the existence and personal identity of an individual continue after the change called death. We affirm that the communication with the so-called dead is a scientifically proven by the phenomenon of spiritualism. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the golden rule Whatsoever ye would that others should do unto you, do ye also unto them. We affirm that the remorse of the individual and that he makes his own happiness or unhappiness as they obey or disobey the spiritual laws. We affirm that the doorway to reformation is never closed against any human soul here or hereafter. We affirm that the precepts of prophecy and healing contained in the Bible are divine attributes proven through the mediumship. Okay. Did you need something? No, I just turned the mic up so you're off the soft. You're off the soft. You're soft <laughs> <laughs> if any of you know me, that is not really who I am. Okay. To continue, uh, we're going to go in to the healing prayer, which is also in your bulletin. Again, if you'll join me with this, please. I ask this great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and the power of God. Okay, at this time, any of you that would wish to receive spiritual healing, you can go to the next healer available over here on this side. And uh, as the healers are doing their healing, uh, please join with me uh, in the meditation, the healing meditation. To begin with, it's important for you to get in a comfortable position. 
Wh whichever way you're most comfortable, hands up, hands down, feet flat on the floor, whichever way you're comfortable. We're going to take uh, three deep breaths. And join with me in relaxing. Feel your shoulders relax. You might want to move them a little bit, your neck. Just relax in this moment. Everything is made up of energy, and even our bodies are made up of energies. And these energies in our body have memories. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little walk down the memories through our body. And what I would like you to do is I want you to concentrate and send energies to these areas. And as you send to these areas, I want you to bring the memory out of these areas of when these areas of your body were healthy, happy, fully functioning. We're going to release that memory and that's going to send us into a healing energy for those areas. We're going to start with our feet. Concentrate on our feet. Visualize our feet. Visualize all the muscles, all the nerves. Visualize that. Now visualize when you had no pain in your feet. Visualize when you were able to run without any problems, without any pain. Visualize that. Some of us might have to go back to our youth to find that energy, but go back and find that energy. Take a couple of breaths and go back there and find that energy where your feet were just as healthy as can be. Be aware now that you're feeling a little bit of a tingling in those feet. Now we're going to move up a little bit and we're going to move, move into our knee area. Send that energy there, that, men, that healing memory energy should be coming aware in your knees. Send that energy in a circle all around your knees to the front part of your knees, the back part of your knees. Feel that energy. Feel that memory coming back of when you could walk upstairs without holding on, where you could get up from a chair without having to brace yourself. You have no pain in this area of your knees. Breathe deep. Breathe deep. Bring that energy back. Visualize yourself maybe playing on a monkey bar, hanging by your knees. What joy it was and what strength you had in that part of your body. Visualize that. Stay there a moment feeling that energies. Feel that warmth through your knees. Now visualize going up a little bit further into your thighs, into your hips. Go back and pull that memory of youth, how strong those thigh muscles were, how they could endure those long walks or those lovely bicycle rides. Remember that. Pull that healing memory back <coughs> to the forefront of your mind and body. 
feel it in the top of your thighs. Feel strong through those thighs. Then go into the hip area, those joints, those hip joints. Again, reach back, reach back, and pull out that memory of healthy hip joints, movable, without any pain, without any restriction in those hip areas. As you're feeling this, you almost want to laugh out loud because you can feel the warmth. You can feel that healing energy. You feel it. It penetrates that whole area of your hip joints. It makes you want to get back on a bike and ride again, being able to move those hips in a painless manner. Bring that memory of healthy joint back to the forefront. Now as you move up, you move into your stomach area, your intestinal area. You pull back that memory that you had as a child where you could eat about anything you wanted without reoccurrence of anything physical hampering the joy you had with eating whatever it was your favorite from cotton candy to hot dogs. Feel that healing energy through that stomach intestinal area. And as you pull that energy up through that area, I want you to visualize a very clear white energy all around that area, releasing any of the energies that might be inhibiting your comfort in that area. Visualize it in your stomach, in your intestines. Visualize it. That energy, that healing, youth type of energy all through that part of your body. Now you're going up to your chest area. You visualize your heart. You visualize your lungs. You pull that memory to the forefront of healthy heart beating with a strength and a confidence that you had in youth. You pull that energy into your lungs where you could walk or run without having shortness of breath. You feel that air going all the way down through your lungs, filling your lungs with clean, healthy, healing energy and air. Again, with this feeling, you want to bring a smile to your face because that memory is real to you. That healing energy memory is real to you. Stay there a moment. Enjoy it. Claim it. Now you're going to bring that energy up through your throat, through your head, through your eyes. You feel all that energy from memory pulling, pulling up from the past, from that memory that your body has held in that energy. You visualize seeing more clearly you visualize being able to move your jaw without it cracking or moving. You visualize this. You pull that healing energy from those muscles 
and nerves, those muscles and nerves that have had this memory forever for you. You visualize the energy up through the top of your head, releasing, releasing any tension you might have through your brows, between your eyes. You visualize that. Now as we're bringing back and pulling all that healing energy from memory, you also go into the emotional side of the mind. And you go in and you look for that day, that time, that experience when you felt free. You didn't have any resentment. You didn't have any guilt. You didn't have any concerns. You reach and pull out the day and the time and that memory of pure joy, pure happiness, pure contentment. You feel that. You feel that through your head, through your neck. That energy goes down to the heart chakra. You feel it in the heart with joy, contentment. This energy that we've been experiencing is who you are. This is who we are. This is who we are meant to be. Hold on to that energy, knowing with confidence that you do not have to give in to any of the ailments that might be given in a name. We reject those names that restrict us. We know that we are powerful, divine individuals connected to the universal energies. We know that and we are claiming that with joy and with power. Stay there a moment. Feel that energy. Be content. Be happy. Be full of love for yourself, for this body, for those people around you. Feel that love. Feel that memory that you've pulled from the past where you weren't restricted about showing how much you cared for individuals, nor how much you cared for yourself. Take a couple of deep breaths. know that this is you. This is the full, complete you. So as we come back into this building, we want to thank the universal healing energies that we do have the ability to pull that happy memory from every part of our body to be happy, to be joyful. So when you're ready, you can open your eyes and we'll all come back. Everybody good? Yes. Everybody good. All right, I would like to thank the healers. Our healers are Lori Carter, Marie Gates, our wonderful Darlene McCormick. Thank you, healers. Okay. All right, at this time, I'd like to say that if you have received any type of healing or a correction during that healing, we'd like you to complete this little yellow card there in the back. Uh, we like to keep track of any healing uh, adjustments and, and joys that we might uh, have experienced in here. So, you know, fill it out. If you know your healer's name, put their name on it. If you don't ask, we can help you with that. Okay. Now to go on with the reason you're here today. Okay. Our guest lecturer today is I, Inez Bracey. 
Uh, she is a motivational speaker, author. She hosts her own radio show, uh, Living Smart and Well, and the resident career coach for Fox 4 News, Blend TV show. She has empowered women to live a life of choice by sharing tips on workplace place communication, finding the right company for you, and even how to get back into the work force, which is really needed right now, correct? So at this time, I'd like to introduce our lecturer, Miss Inez. Come in. Thank you. I am just as excited as I can be to be with you today. It just brings me such bliss. And you will hear me talk about bliss quite a bit because I look at happiness as situation and event driven. But I look at my bliss as being generated from within with my thoughts and my actions and my behaviors. So therefore, I get to choose it whenever I want, whether I bought something or not, which is really key for me. Wow. Last year was the year that was a surprise for many of us, I know especially for me. And about that year, we were in lockdown, we couldn't do this, we couldn't do that, or we thought we couldn't anyway. And because we couldn't do all those things, sometimes the internal changes that happened in us, and mentally and physically, we found ourselves in a place that we didn't like, but we didn't know how to quite get out of it. So today I'm going to be talking to you about change, about resistance, and about fear. And when I look at all of those three, to me it means this big stop sign, and we are going to stop because we don't know what to do anymore. Now how many of you locked yourself into your home and you just stayed in the house? You learned how to, I know I did, I learned how to order my food from Publix on Instacart, <laughs> and they would bring it. And it would be frozen if it was frozen and fresh. It was amazing. And if I had something on my list that they didn't have in the store, they would send me a picture of what they could substitute. I thought that was awesome. I didn't have to go out for it, and I enjoyed it. How many of you started a new habit, started a new hobby, started something that gave you the opportunity to just relax? Or were you just so tired of, when is this gonna be over? When is this gonna be over? I don't know when this is gonna be over. Well, it's over for now. So now that we are coming out of the lockdown, we're into almost, oh, past the half year, we get to celebrate. And what does celebration look like for you? Does it mean now that I can leave the house, I'm gonna go out every single day no matter what? Or does it mean that I'm really going to give myself permission to be, to create that person I know myself to be? Because all during that year, you had an opportunity to get to know yourself intimately. And as you were getting to know yourself intimately, some of us decided, well, that doesn't work for me anymore, so I'm not doing it. And then we brought in those things that brought us bliss, brought us exquisite joy. And as we are enjoying those things that bring us exquisite joy, we get to be that to be it all the time. A big part of being the person you know yourself to be, being in the energy of accepting, allowing, and receiving is taking full responsibility for your results, your consequences, and everything that follows. In changing, I found that practicing gratitude really was the key for me. And growing up, my mom used to teach us all the time, be grateful for everything, all of it, because it's all coming to you for a lesson or a learning. So sometimes things will come in this big box, and the box is so beautiful, we think, oh, yes. Then we tear the paper off, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> this was not what I expected. But be grateful because it came. You get to look at it. You can turn it around. You can turn it to all facets. And as you're looking at it, you might see that little nugget in there that says, wait a minute, even though I thought this wasn't for me, now I have the opportunity to explore something different. In exploring something different, I find that it's bringing me joy. That's amazing. And as you find that things are bringing you joy, make a note of it. 
A big part of change is also how resistant am I to change? My niece said to me, I'm a big resistor to change. I don't like change. Well, it's going to happen anyway. Change is going to happen anyway. How about we decide to be the captain of this ship and create the change that we desire in our life? And if we're captain, being the captain of our own ship and creating the change, we're going to let some things go because they don't belong in this new space. Some of the stuff that will not belong in the new space is attachments to old things that keep pulling you back. Every time you want to take a step forward, I can't do that because, oh yes you can. Let it go. Now sometimes you might want to go back and pick it up and examine it again and you realize, I know for sure this is done. And when you know for sure that it's done, you could do a ceremony to bury it, you can throw it away, you can do whatever you want, but let it stay gone. Because every time you release attachment to that thing that's been holding you back, you open the space for the newness to come in, to reside within your energy, to be in the space that now, wow, I can, do, or I can stay here. This is getting to know yourself intimately. As you're knowing yourself intimately, it gets to stay. Now, it doesn't mean it has to stay forever, because we continually change, we continually grow. That's the nature of life. So if something comes today and it's like, whoa, this is so delicious, this is juicy, this is good, I'm keeping it forever. No, you don't have to keep it forever. You can enjoy it while you have it. It's almost like one of my favorite desserts is carrot cake. And what I like about the carrot cake is the icing more than anything else. When, and, and I eat the icing before I eat the cake. <laughs> and as I'm eating that icing, I don't do this often because, you know, it just is not good for me, but I eat it every now and then. And as I am eating this icing, I'm thinking to myself, what a treat. Mm, it's just, and I slowly just eat it and get a taste of all of it. <gasps> it's so good. That's what happens when something good comes into your life. Love it. Enjoy it. It's delicious. It's juicy. It's fine. When it no longer serves, you let it go. Because something else is waiting to take the place of that juiciness. So as one of the things that I'm going to talk about today is creating a journal. And as you create a journal, it's usually a gratitude journal. And in this journal, you write down the things that you desire now, the things that came before that were really, really good, and you're grateful for that, and the things that are here in this moment. It's so amazing what happens when we start to writing down the gratitude. So many times we're begging, oh Lord, please just let me have this. No. We get to the point where we are grateful for it. We've already asked for it. So now we're in gratitude of having received it or it's on its way. And the intention, the attention, and the mindfulness that you put to it is going to attract it to you sooner than later. Some of us go, mm hmm Okay. Hmm. If you cared about it, you wouldn't throw this paper down like that. You would hold it and you would look at it and you would affirm to yourself, wow, this is awesome. So you treat the things that you love with kindness. You treat the things that you are attracting into your life with kindness. You treat those things when you actually touch them physically, oh my goodness, now I can touch it because we brought it in with our intention, attention, and mindfulness. The more attention that you give to your desires, the more mindfulness and the more intention that you give to your desires, concentrated, will help you see the results a lot quicker. And in doing that, I'm gonna give you one tip now. One tip is to create a daily choice. If it's something you wanna change in your life, something you wanna bring into your life, what will you do daily to allow this to come? As you create your daily choice, create that choice with intention. And it could be a five minute choice, a three second choice, whatever. It, you could be in that choice all day. And I say one because we like to start changing and we got so much we want to change, we write it all down and we write it all down. And then we become overwhelmed. Where do I start? Because we want to do it all in that one moment. That's not going to happen. But if you just take one, 
and say, okay, I'm going to do this five minutes every morning before I get out of bed or while I'm having my coffee or my tea or my, whatever my first drink in the morning is, I'm going to do it that time. And I'm going to be intentional and attentional about it. And as I'm being intentional and putting attention to it, I'm envisioning in my mind what the result is going to be as I swallow this coffee. And it's amazing how that works because the coffee now brings a new meaning. As you're pouring and making your coffee, you're, you're just being grateful for the feel to the table. Everything that went into bringing that coffee being into your house, you're grateful for it. And you're sending love out to all those people that touched it. Do you know how much trust we have in folk? Sometimes we don't think we have a lot of trust. But when you think about it, if you shop at a food store rather than growing your own, you got a whole lot of trust. And that trust is because you trust that whoever touched this food did it with love so that now I can enjoy it. So you want to get into gratitude for that. Same thing with driving. Even on I-4, you got trust. Because <laughs> if you don't, you're in a whole lot of trouble. And even with trusting, sometimes you see things that happen, and I always send love that way, and I keep going my way. Because as you are sending love to them, you're sending love to everybody else on this road so that we can all get where we're going safely. And that is very important. Taking full responsibility, full responsibility for yourself. Nobody can take responsibility for you unless you say, well, you're going to be responsible for me and I'm going to do everything you tell me to do. Not, because that's going to cause you to start being resentful feeling guilty, being ashamed I can't think for myself, I can't take responsibility for myself. So you take full responsibility for you. And when Judah was reading number seven, I went, wow, that's right along what I'm talking about. We affirm the moral responsibility of individuals and that we make our own happiness or unhappiness as we obey or disobey nature's physical and spiritual laws. Think about that for a second. How powerful is that? And sometimes we get into the energy, I'm going to do it my way no matter what, and everything is slapping up against you saying no, 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 but you're still powering through. The next thing you know, it's in such a, such a state that I better take a minute and just sit down and allow. Allow and accept and receive and listen to my inner being. Listen to the inner being that guides me and has been guiding me all the time. And when we decide to do that, you start to breathe differently. You start to breathing in the oxygen that your organs are desiring. Most of us breathe so shallowly, our, our organs are like, give me some more, give me some more. But we don't. We start to hydrate differently. We begin to replace soda or whatever it is with water. And the body and the organs start going, they're just clapping and just getting excited about it. Because now you're not only feeding your mind, you're also feeding your incel. And that's very important. So as you take full responsibility for yourself, wow, it just changes things in your world. Let me just say this. When you start taking full responsibility for yourself, there will be people, places, things, and objects that you will let go. It doesn't mean that you don't love them. It just means that they are no longer supporting or being in a supportive position for you. Now there are some people who have friends and every time they tell them what they're gonna do, they knock it down. You want that person around you now? I don't. I would rather have somebody with me who can point out a flaw perhaps, but support me in going forth with whatever it is I desire. Having supportive people in your sphere makes all the difference. Because then you know, okay, I have support, I can go forward. Now they might not always support you, but you know that if you really need them, they are gonna be there. And that's the most important thing. So as you are going through the rest of this day, think about where am I taking responsibility or where am I allowing others to do it for me? Now when we take full responsibility and control we get to be in the energetic space of causing what we desire in our life. Now there you know there's always cause and effect, right? 
So when we are in our space of taking full responsibility, doing our daily, daily choice, whatever it is we're gonna do, and it could be just a half a degree. It doesn't have to be that big. Because sometimes when we start with the big things, we start stumbling and bumbling and, oh, it's not for me. I don't feel like it today. Why don't I feel like it today? I don't know why I don't feel like it today. Because it was too big when you started. Take something small, a half a degree, a degree. And as you are doing that, you're causing your, whatever it is you're attracting to you to come. When you give up your responsibility for yourself, you get to be at the effect of somebody else. And a big example of that was last year. We were all at the effect of somebody else. There is no way that I would have caused myself to stay in my house for a year. No way. But because somebody else said, this is what you gotta do, that was the effect of it. And we adjusted some kind of way. And as we adjust to it, then we start thinking it's our norm. It's not necessarily your norm unless you want it to be your norm, and then you can make it your norm. But when you really get to thinking about it, well, I didn't cause this, what, what, what can I do? So now you get to take full responsibility and being the causative agent for creating the life that you desire. You're gonna create a journal and you're gonna to learn to smile. Smile, smile, smile. Give somebody a smile, because a lot of people don't get a smile, they don't get a hello, they don't get anything. A lot of people live alone. And in living alone, when they go out, they want somebody to talk to them, but people don't usually talk to them because they're looking at them and going about, I'm not saying a word to that person. <laughs> Make it your business to say good morning, to say hello. Oh, I love that dress that you're wearing. People love compliments, but be genuine in it. Don't make up if you, like, if you don't like that dress, don't say anything about it. <laughs> so you're gonna do your daily choices, you're gonna smile, and you're gonna be intentional with everything that's going on in your world. As you are paying attention and being intentional, writing in your journal, and go back and read it over time, you're gonna be so proud of how smart you've been. Some of the things you write, you go, whoa, I wrote that, I, wow. And that happens because now you're intentionally being the person you know yourself to be, connecting intimately with yourself and taking full responsibility, causing that that you desire. Thank you. Thank you very much. She gave us a lot to think about, a lot to think about. Okay, at this time I'd like to uh, make uh, you aware that we have a prosperity bowl back there between Margarita and Phil with the lights. Uh, this, um, this is for the upkeep of our uh, camp and our association. We are a old organization so there's always something that needs help. Uh, also, you can go to our, our live streamers, can go to our, uh, visit our website, casadega.org, and click the donate button. And at this time, I want to thank everybody for uh, donating. We, uh, we appreciate everything. And so I want to do a little prayer of thanks. Uh, Infinite Spirit, we thank you for all those open hearts that are out there. Uh, wanting to share their blessings with us, and we ask you to return it tenfold to them. It's in the name of truth we pray. <coughs> All right, that's the fun part. I'm sorry. Here's the announcements. Okay, uh, next Wednesday, uh, 721, our message bearer will be the Reverend Don Cassidy. There is a little bit of a misprint in the bulletin, but it is Reverend Cassidy. Next Sunday, our message, our lecturer and speaker for this uh, service will be the Reverend Suzanne DeWeese, Ph.D. Every Sunday, we have Adult Lyceum, also known as Sunday School, from 9.30 to 10.15 here in this building. And so next Sunday, our Lyceum speaker will be Richard Russell. It's, uh, it's always a mind-awakening event 
on for Lyceum, and it's a, uh, a Lyceum is a uh, like a Sunday school, but we all can put our own input into anything. So it's an open discussion. To participate in absentee healing, please print the first name and first initial of the last name of a loved one or even a pet in our healing book, which is again in the back of the temple, right there on that little table. Every Thursday, a healing meditation circle is held from 11 uh, to noon right here in this building. Healing is sent to those on the absentee healing list. All are welcome. This service, uh, as well as our Sunday Lyceum and our Sunday service, is live streamed through our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. At the entrance, or some of you already picked them up, we have our bulletin uh, that has uh, a list of our activities, and we have our activity uh, brochure for the month. So please take a, pick one up and take it home with you. Also, you can go to our website. Today's activity, Sitting in the Power of Intuitive Mediumship, is going to be here at, uh, at 2 to 4, uh, led by Reverend Dr. Lewis Gates. Uh, the cost is $25. This is a workshop that will take your work, take your work with spirit to the next level. This course will help you expand and understand your concept of inner power, which is the fundamental building block of any and all spirit communication. On August 1st, our healing gazebo will be open. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, if th those of you don't know, it's down in front of our temple. So uh, it will be open um, from 10 to, right before 10 to what? 10 20. Okay. Yeah, because you'll have to walk up here. So, But it, that's always fun. Now, on August 7th, our uh, Gala Day is the Heart of Spirit Gala Day here. We have many readings by the camp certified and student mediums from 10 till 2 at the at this building 15 minute readings for $25 uh, through as much of the day as possible a mini uh, seminar from 11 to 2 in which speakers will talk about areas of expertise at the Slater house over on Chauncey okay there you go. You heard it. So don't go to Slater House. <laughs> All right. And any other activities are listed in the bulletin. Okay. And on our website, casadega.org. Okay. At this time, I'd like to thank our viewers for joining us. And we're looking forward to spending time with you again. Okay. And we can also...